Odegaard is close to agreeing a new deal with Arsenal. We have seen in recent years Arsenal go from strength to strength as they close in again on becoming one of the best teams in Europe and a team that can challenge and win some of the biggest prizes. Odegaard, the captain, has been an influential figure in the development and the growth of this Arsenal team. Now, Fabrizio Romano uh, speaks in detail here, and we're going to go through this with you. Of course, hit like buttons. Of course, subscribe. We're also going to be touching on Pepe, and for what I can only see is fake outrage regarding this situation. Plus, we're taking a look at the Jadon Sancho saga. Big update on that, which I do think, again, is going to create a further divide between the Man United fan base. So stay with us for all of that. Hit like button, subscribe. Of course, turn on the bell notifications as well. Very, very important to TFT that you do it. Now, let's go into what Fabrizio Romano has got to say first before I give you my opinion. Of course, I want yours in the comments section below. He says here that Martin Odegaard uh, is in love with Arsenal, and Arsenal are in love with Odegaard. And that's going to infuriate people at League Gunner straight away, right? Anyway, uh, so the feeling is mutual that they will continue together for a long time. Odegaard is the club captain and is an important player on and off the pitch. Arsenal are now planning to continue contract negotiations with Odegaard in the next weeks and months in order to get a new deal done. Following the uh, fine work they did uh, to hire down other star players such as Saka and Saliba, Ramsdale and Reese Nelson in recent months. Fabrizio goes on to say that uh, now is the time uh, for Odegaard and Arsenal are very optimistic about a positive outcome to this story with the Norwegian likely to sign a new long-term deal with an improved salary. Goes on to say we are just waiting for the negotiations to continue in the next weeks and months. And I do think, listen, it's, it, I've got no doubt in my mind that there's going to be some big clubs looking at Odegaard. And I think if you first look at Real Madrid... I do truly believe now they regret letting this guy go. When he was first up for loans and sales, my general stance, because it's my general feeling, that for players loaned out by their parent club two, three, four, five times, typically it's because they are not good enough for that club. There are exceptions that prove that rule. Harry Kane is a prime standout example. And Odegaard is also someone now that is the exception that proves the rule. He has gone to Arsenal, and I think he's delivering at the level that that 15-year-old lad, all them years ago now, promised the world that he could do. Now, I still think there's more improvements to come from Odegaard. I still think there's an even better player still to be developed. And I think the last con the two final pieces of the jigsaw for him to be that complete football player is some more great performances in the big games, and scoring or assisting, stroke creating some goals, either in those big games and all that lead to the winning of those major trophies. And we do this a lot as football fans. And I'm, by the way, I'm not about to compare Odegaard in terms of his overall talent to Cristiano Ronaldo. But I always use Ronaldo as the, as the example here because I remember it vividly due to my age. When he came through at Man United at 18, 19, every season there was a new obstacle put in his way as to why he wasn't world-class. It would be consistency or the amount of goals, winning the major trophies, how many goals against the big teams that he scored, how many clutch, how many big matches did he score in. And it's it seemingly every single season, Cristiano Ronaldo was ticking these boxes. And every time he did, the goalposts were moved. And I view Odegaard very much in that same light. And I believe Odegaard is going to be treated the same way by people that don't like him. And that is no matter what he achieves, they will move the goalposts, they will push the envelope further down, kick the can down the street, whatever phrase you want to use to continue to disrespect this guy. Do I think he's as good as KDB? Not right now. Do I think he's one of the greatest midfielders of all time in the Premier League? No, not right now. But do I think he has the foundation and the base to start that argument? Yes, I think that he's there. Now, some of you will say, how, how can you say this, Terry? He hasn't delivered yet. Well, I believe he will, and I believe Arsenal will in the coming years if they stick to this plan that they are on. And that may not necessarily even mean with Arteta, but they stick to this plan. Odegaard is going to be key, and I think they will win major trophies with him at the club. 
So that's po- very, very positive news for Arsenal. Give me your thoughts and your feelings below. And we're going to come back to Arsenal in a little bit. But I wanted to touch on some Sancho news that's come out today. That Sancho is now behind Garnacho and Palestri in Manchester United's attacking pecking order. You know when you know something's going to happen? When you've been in this game too long, when you understand it, just like you, the football terrorist community, we understand this so well. It's so predictable. You know, there's like 2000, there's not, in those 90s and 2000s uh, rom-coms where every single case of the DVD was the same, every poster was the same, the white background, the red right in. You know what I'm saying? You kind of knew the way it worked. Boy meets girl. Girl likes boy. Boy likes girl. Boy would mess up. They would break up. And then in the end, they'd be together. They all followed exactly the same pattern. This is happening here. I promise you. Palestri moving up the pecking order will inspire some people. They like Palestri. They want to see him given an opportunity. But there is also a group of Man United fans who think that Garnacho is overrated, he's meaty, he's not a good footballer. He's basic, they believe. And there's a lot of bad-minded people. There's a lot of negative energy out there. And their view is, well, I rate Sancho. Sancho's not being treated fairly. Therefore, Garnacho, I don't like him, so I'm not going to treat him fairly. They repeat the same bad energy they feel their favorite players get onto players they dislike. I I think it's, I've said it for many years, it's a bad-minded person who thinks that way through life in general, let alone their own football club, creates further negativity upon negativity, believing it's going to create an element of positivity at some point. It, It makes no sense. They will hide behind standards, but it's nothing to do with standards. It's to do with them being upset and emotional. And this is going to create a further divide because rather than say, I'm glad these kids are being given a chance to develop, come on boys, try and deliver, supporting them, criticizing them when they need it and treating these players in isolated separately from how they feel about Sancho, it won't happen. This will create a further divide. That doesn't mean, by the way, that Sancho should just be placed back into the first team. It means, Sancho, you have to now go away work hard when you get your opportunities you need to deliver you need to be the best in training every time you step foot on that pitch from man united you need to be the best player in the world if you want to move up the pecking order it's as simple and as straightforward as that that is how it should be that's how i would treat it if it was if i was in sancho's position whether being in a sporting context or whether it being in a business context i say right fine let's do this you're you're marking me down you're saying i'm not worthy i'm going to prove to you you're wrong positive mental attitude i don't see this happening and by the way this is no attack on sancho at all i think sancho has the ability to easily push himself ahead of those two on technical ability sancho is better the technical ability and application are not the same thing this is about sancho delivering i believe he can do it how i think we help get him there and by the way develop these kids is by generally speaking, being positive about this situation and encouraging. Criticize where it's due, but be positive overall. You're not going to get that. I'm telling you now, this will create a further divide, arguments, nitpicking, and just general backbiting amongst fans. This is, How do I know this? It's been the story now for 10 years. It's not going to change on this. So I'm, I was guided to read this this morning, but I do want to get your op- opinions on this. Now, Nicolas Pepe, back to Arsenal here, because this is such an interesting talking point for me. It's now confirmed that Nicolas Pepe has left Arsenal for free. Contract terminated. The Ivorian winger has joined, uh, I'm going to butcher the name of this club, is it Trenton? Them. I'm not going to butcher it again. So left my head out of sight. Really do apologise. It's my dyslexia. We move. On a short-term deal. Done and sealed for the past two days. Now, there was a feeling that a two or three million pound fee was going to be had with add-ons rising to like eight million. There was talk of this. Hasn't happened. It's a free transfer. And I see a select group of Arsenal fans angry. 
Why are we giving players away for free? Because nobody wants to buy Pepe. Nobody believes he's value for money. Even these men, short-term deal. There's not the faith in him. A lot of these guys, by the way, think that he's good enough to challenge Saka. There's no proof of that. Your eye test isn't proof. It's an opinion, but it isn't proof. The facts of the matter are that not even the biggest clubs in Turkey wanted him. He's available for free. Anybody in the world theoretically could have purchased him. Nobody wanted him. No Prem clubs, no La Liga, no Serie A, no German, no Portuguese, not even the Scottish teams. No one. So why the fake outrage? And then me and Lee will discuss this next week. Well, the show won't be on Tuesday. Tuesday my, my, is my, aunt, my auntie's funeral's on, so we're going to find a day next week. But I saw this tweet from Lee Gunner. And you all know, I've got a lot of time and respect for Lee. I challenge what he says, but I've got a lot of time and respect for him because he speaks his mind. I don't agree with everything, but I respect that he says it. And it says here, the forced Pepe slander is hilarious. Well, firstly, I think the forced Pepe outrage is hilarious. Last trophy Arsenal won, and he was class in the semifinals and final. I think he was good in those two games. You're right, and he was part of that last team. It says, we're now on our longest trophy drought for a decade, 640 million later. Only Nelson, Eddie, and Saka are still here from that final squad. So a toxic squad can win, but a full Arteta squad can't. He says, almost like being toxic was working. Three FA Cups in six years and now bin everyone and win F all for three and a half years. And it's a take. It's a take. And there's some elements in there that I understand. But the problem is this. Yes, they won an FA Cup in the early stages of uh, Arteta's reign. But there is no way that... that I think 95% of Arsenal fans would swap the style of football from back then and how good they were overall as a football club and a football team for where they are now. Yes, there have been no trophies, and that is the aim. But I do believe Arsenal now are in a more stain sustainable position to win trophies, to challenge for Premier Leagues, and to give the Champions League a good go compared to three, three and a half years ago. You wouldn't want to go back there as an Arsenal fan. And ironically, talking about those four FA Cups in six years, is that an admission of guilt that Lee Gunner was wrong, along with a lot of other Arsenal fans, for one thing, Wenger out? Were those times better than now? If it was just about the FA Cups, then fair play. But I think a full apology would be needed for the banners and the, the chants and the rants and everything else. So I don't know. Look, I, I, I want to gauge your opinion on this. Do you think, and Lee's not the only Arsenal fan with the, this opinion, there's almost like this outrage that the kind of the Pepe's and the TNEs and the Abamyangs and whoever else have been moved on. And this new squad isn't as good. This new team isn't as good as three to four years ago. That's why I'm, I'm reading this. I want to get your opinions because personally, I kind of feel like it's fake outrage. I, I don't understand it. I don't understand why you're angry about getting rid of a player who is bang average that nobody else in the world wants to pay any money for. I cannot understand for the life of me the frustration in that. Even the points that are being raised, cool, but I don't get the frustration. I want to get your opinions below, people. Make sure you smash like buttons as ever. Make sure you subscribe, turn on those bell notifications. Take care, goodbye, God bless, and I'll see you all again soon. Peace.